Hey guys, it's Ellen. Welcome to my channel. It's Monday, so we're painting Mini Monday Madness, this cute little cottage in a daffodil field. It's pen and ink. Well, not pen and ink, I'm sorry, ink and wash. The ink part is the house, the wash is everything else. I go over this step by step. If you need a little traceable, um, I have one on if you're a Patreon member, but not necessary. I give you a reference photo, how I came about this uh, illustration here and show you how I take the photo and translate it in my way. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. If you haven't hit that bell notification button, please do so so you know my tutorial is up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please check out my Patreon. Um, it, I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays, live stream on the top tier, and uh, download for myself. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. You can check it out right here. Boop. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, for this um, tutorial, I'll go over the supplies that we'll need. I have a three inch square of arch, 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I taped it down with just Scotch magic tape on just a piece of cardboard, just to keep it in place. <clears throat> my palette with my paints in them, I'll go over, go over them as I use them, they're always, Everything I use in the description box, there's the words show more under description. There's a little V underneath that and just click on that and the whole box drops down with all the description of the links and what I'm using. I'll be using my Princeton 8 Long Round Velvet Touch Series brush. I'm um, going to draw one with pencil and then I'm probably going to use my Sharpie pen to fill it in. And I have paper towels here as well. If, if the Princeton you can't use it because it's too, maybe your point, point isn't pointy enough. You can go to a number four that works for you. Um, so I have enclosed the um, the inspiration piece of the photo here. It's attached. The link is in there. And you see that the house is pretty big, long house. And there's another thing behind here and here. So you can take photographs for inspiration, but you don't have to necessarily draw everything you see. And I decided I don't want to have this big, long house and I don't want these things on the side. I just like the field and the house here. So basically, use them in a little bit. Then it's going to draw in, I'm going to use my 2H pencil, the house shape. It's just a rectangle. All right. And then another kind of rectangle on top. But then it the lines kind of curve this way and this way for me. That's what I'm doing. And then of course the doorway I'll have in the middle here. Window. You can make it as simple as you want. Then there was a window the the, um, the windows above the have the the I can't even think of my brand name. <laughs> the windows up top. They have a little you know, the triangle over them. You can put shutters here if you want to. So you just draw out how you want to, you know, put out the, all the, the the house part. And then once you have that sketched out, I'm going to go in and take a Sharpie pen and I'll just fill those in and I'll make the little windows, maybe put the little shutters, um, because it's so tiny when you get this small. And I'll just go across here, down. Now, it just shows a field, but I decided I'm going to put like a little fence on the side. See so the angle of the rectangle here. And windows here. Put the little window panes. They're so tiny. Put a little doorway. You could put a little chimney up here too. It's too simple. And then just kind of just like sketch in almost like little dots. Kind of like the field, you know. It can kind of curve down. And then you can put in the fence. And the little lines attaching to it. I like to do ink and wash, it's kind of fun. Now you can get real technical with your drawing here and get little, if you want to have, you know, a roof that's shingled roof, 
I think this is a shingle roof, but I'm making like little dashes going across to indicate it's kind of like a shingle roof, an English cottage. So what I was trying to blanking on was that these are dormers. <laughs> I was blanking on the dormers. Yeah, go back in and just we'll go over this again. And you can put siding in, little dash lines for siding. You don't have to do this, but I'm just doing this. And you get the windows. And see, I just kind of like went like this. Now, down here, you can get technical if you want to with the um, daffodils. You could draw out some of them, maybe because it, you know, they're showing them pretty big, but you can draw, it's like a star. So, right? And then a circle here, and then you pull out the circle, and that's a daffodil. I'll show you up close. So, a star but pointed, like rounded, rounded points. And then pitch yourself a circle, but pull the circle out. Another circle here. And there's your daffodil. So you erase this part. So what ends up happening is that you have this part like this, and then you have a little rounded star, and you have your daffodil, right? So you could draw a bunch of like bigger ones here but, or you can keep it loose. I think I'm gonna try and keep mine loose. <laughs> so I'm laughing because uh, my glasses fell down and that's why I had to stop. So I'm erasing those pencil marks that I made. And we've got the colors and everything here for inspiration, the house we can kind of keep white. We can put in some grays for shadows. They had these little yellow tiny dormers. You can try and put those in. The sky can be blue, any color you want. So let's just get, get, get to it. Now for painting yellow, obviously, if you wanted to go in and use like a whole bunch of like masking fluid and then bleed in the green and then do that, you could do that. But I'm gonna do it just painting the yellow first. We'll start off with the sky. I'm gonna use ultramarine blue here. It's a very pretty color. You just water this down. See the lot of water. You see how it's just dripping? That's a lot of water. Now what you do to control that, you want the way you get watercolor lighter is by adding water with acrylic paint, oil paint, you would add white or something like that. So, so here, see, I'm, it's darker here, but there's more water here, so it's lighter. I always tap on the paper towel or a towel, towel close by, and then you can get off the excess water and then you can paint it with more control. See, now I'm just going to fill this in. It's pretty blue sky. It's almost like a paint by number at this point, right? You just kind of fill it in. Go and add some more blue. Just paint around this. That's, now you can start to add in because it's already damp with the blue. Deeper blue if you want to. You don't have to. So I'm gonna grab that darker blue on this side. Just kind of bleed in some blue. Depends on how like bright you want this picture to be, but I think it'd be kind of pretty because it's yellow. You think of like, you know, the Van Gogh sunflowers, the blue and the yellow is a nice, nice together, really pretty. Get even darker if you want to. Depends on how dark you want your blue to be. Just playing around here. This. Princeton 8 is fairly new, so the point is really pointy, so I can play around with just using this brush. You want to get darker, but don't want it so bright. You can add a little of this color. I have this color called Neutral Tint. It actually is a color. It's kind of a bluish gray. I see I've added that to it. It gets a little bit deeper. Just kind of tapping in that color. Depends on how bright you want the sky to be. Playing around with the color. Or I take some concentrated ultramarine blue. Maybe I don't want the sky to be so dark. And if you want clouds, so you have a blue sky with some clouds. 
or if you want it lighter than you did, clean off your brush, kind of lift up the paint, and tap it on the paper towel. See? It's almost like mopping. It will dry lighter, by the way, so don't fret. I'm going to fill this part in. Na, 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 na. Okay, so now we're going to work on the yellows and greens. So we obviously have yellow here, cadmium yellow deep. That way for the daffodils. You do want to have a little, see there's some oranges in there. So I have this color, cadmium red light. I'm going to put some of that over here. So we have orange and yellow. Um, the greens, I always like to make my greens. So I have, you don't have to. Feel free to do whatever you want. I use cadmium yellow deep and I'll add peacock blue and Prussian blue to make darker green. So I have the yellow here. I'll grab in some peacock blue. Peacock blue is almost like a turquoise blue. Um, if you don't have that, cobalt works nice. Get that bright green, see that? I put some more over here and I'll add way up top of here is Prussian blue. And I'll mix that with that green and you get this deeper green. So I'll keep adding yellows. See, darker green. I'll add more Prussian blue. I always like to add a little burnt umber just to tone down the brightness. But you might want that. You can make this yellow here and add some more yellow to the screen. Make it a bright green. All right, we're going to set up just playing with the yellows first. And we're just going to add, it looks like a bunch of dots, right? Basically. Clean up my brush because it was got some green on it. We don't want yellow green. Fairly bright. Just take the tip of your brush, guys. You're just kind of tapping. See? Tap, 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 tap. You can do little sound effects like I'm doing. Now, they'll get a little bit bigger taps down this way. See, kind of make the sound effects. There would be bigger daffodils. Closer to you is going to be bigger. Further away is going to be tinier. So you see, I'm just kind of wiggling the brush. I'm not doing anything super fancy. Just with that bright yellow. It would get smaller in the back. See how tiny? They look much tinier in the back. And they would get bigger as you get co closer to the front. You can even put a nice big one up front. So you get this just tapping the color in. Tap, 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 tap. Also, you don't want to make it so spaced out. You see how they have, you'll see clumps in here and clumps in here and clumps in here and clumps. That looks more natural. Um, if you have like dot, 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 always like spaces it's not going to look natural. It's going to look kind of goofy and fake because the flowers wouldn't bloom like that. They would bloom kind of in clusters because they are bulbs. It's a lot of bulbs that someone planted. Oh, you can't really see that. I'm sorry. So let's point out the picture and you can't see it. A lot of bulbs. So I don't really need the picture anymore. We're going to just play around. You can look at it on the side if you want to. But at this point, we're just going to add the little yellow flowers. And then we can take some of that orange and tap it next to some of them. See, it's bleeding right into the center of them. You might want to wait till some of them dry before you tap the orange part in. Some bleeds would be nice, but I wouldn't do it on every one of them. While you're waiting for the yellow to dry, we can start to play with the greens. So I got the light green here. Just take the brush, start doing some strokes. Because you see in the picture that, that the greens are going haphazardly. So I would use the light ones first. If they bleed into the yellow, don't worry about it. So they're kind of going like this way and that way. So you want to do the same thing with the brush. Grabbing some of the darker green and going in between the yellow flowers. If they're still wet, you might want to wait till it dries. Taking my time, just going in between. 
kind of feeling and I'll grab some of this darker green and again if it's too wet tap on the paper towel and then take your time going in you just take your time some of it's bled in the yellow just push it away fix it try and go in between if you can so I'm gonna wait till some of this dries and then go back in Okay, so I got some of the yellow to dry. I'm going to go back in with my brush, grab the darker greens. You can grab the lighter greens first. You want to just fill all those in with light green. And then you can just go right on top of that with dark. You can't do the opposite, right? So we can go in and fill anything we want with bright light green. Like I'm doing here. And then you can go back over that. Obviously, you don't want to paint in your yellow part. And now, because the yellow is dry, you can add in some little bit of the orange. And just because the photograph shows the uh, daffodil fields full, full with you can't even see any white, like you can right here, right here in this watercolor, don't feel you have to do the same. You know, it's a painting it's an illustration it's an expression of what we're seeing so you can leave the white don't feel you have to fill it all in I'm just kind of doing that now I've had some um, tutorials where you splatter and you can kind of do that way you would have to cover this and you can kind of do it that way if you want to do it that way but this way you're getting more conscious of like where color placement is when you actually have to put in the color. So now I'm going back in and I'm grabbing that darker color, as you can see. And I'll make some of those movements of the stems. See, left, right, left, right, kind of going crazy. Keeping the yellow. You can really, what would be really pretty is that if you can just kind of like really go around a couple of them and highlight them and don't have to worry about it. Just get a little fast, you can kind of just tap in the greens around this way. It would take you forever if you just kind of like really paint around them. Again, tapping. And as you get towards the front, you just take your brush and you're swiping the greens just like so and then you can like I said the greens the darker ones you can go up here and you just kind of tap in that green in between the yellow I hope that makes sense to you guys so rather than watch have me watch me paint every little green stem I'm just gonna go ahead and do this and we're going to come back and work on the house also one little trick I'm going to talk about so you can leave the white spaces down here I'm going to grab the yellow here and make it like pretty light green um, you can just take this color and go on top of all just kind of wash the color and it will fill in those little spaces just like that and just like that, <laughs> Sex in the City, as they say. Okay, grab some more. You can put yellow right in there too. See, I'm putting some yellow right in there. And you just fill it in, you know, go back in if you want to add more. My yellow got a little green here. There we go. If your yellow got kind of washed away, you can kind of fix that. And then you can now you can add the little orange get even a little bit darker you want to add a little bit more orange orange just for variety you know you have a hint of that orange the yellow try and fill in some more spaces here now there was a little yellow on this roof if you want to try and put this right here it did show some more yellow 
I, you know, you don't have to do that. Maybe put a little yellow trim around the door. Kind of cute. So the house is going to be mostly white and I'm going to have gray. And I have this neutral tint color, which is perfect for that. You could use a pan's gray and you could add a little ultramarine blue. Tap it on the paper towel because remember, it's very wet. I'm adding more water. All right, we're going to put the little shadows in. Just under the roof line here. See, it's very wet. That's why I have the paper towel close by. Just going to go over here to the left and then pull it underneath the roof line there. And then a little bit on next to the doorway and the shutters. Keeping it mostly white. You can go back in and grab a little bit of this, a little bit darker. Now the roof would be darker, so they would have the gray. It could be more of like a brown thatched roof, like an English roof. And a little brown to that. Let's see how that looks. So it's going to be much darker. No, I'm going to keep it more gray. I'm going to add the gray to it. I didn't like the brown. I'm going to fill that in. The shutters could be any color you want. You can make them black, gray. Same thing with the, um, I have the little fireplace thing up here. So I think I'll make my shutters dark color. I mean, you're still using the prints in eight because it's like I said, it's got a nice point to it. If you want to switch to a four, go right ahead. And the door, I'll make a little, I'll make it darker. Pull that down. Just a simple little house, right? Isn't she cute? I'll put a little more color here. And I'm going to get a little bit darker again here still. And then you're just going to tweak it with the yellows, some oranges. If you get little white spots, you can just kind of go in here and fill them in. That's why I like doing the pen and ink because, um, you know, it's easier to fill in. And you can fill in the windows darker if you wanted to, do. black, and then add, like, if you have to add white gouache to get the window panes. I don't know if it's necessary, you know. It's up to you guys. I just think it's cute. I mean, you know, if you want to make them darker, you could. So I'll show you. Just go in here, make the windows darker. Oops, that bled. <laughs> right now, I'll just keep them light gray. And then just go back in with white gouache and just do the crisscross in the window pane. And now, also, this is the way you can tweak the front. i have grab some Prussian blue. I mix it into that green I had. Even some neutral tint and burnt umber. Get it really dark. Even burnt umber. And you want to just kind of go in some some areas, like highlight just a little bit darker in some, certain spots. See, I'm going back in here. Not everywhere. Some reason these colors are too concentrated. <laughs> Sometimes you can have that issue. I'm gonna grab some green. Here we go. Maybe this side on the left is a little bit darker than the right. You wanna play around with that and see how it goes. Just filling in a few more down the front. And that's our cute little daffodil field house see how we take a photograph for inspiration and you oh my god sorry guys <laughs> i love my life it's so crazy okay isn't she a cutie i think she's super cute 
super easy guys rectangles rectangles little squares triangles dapping and paint drawing with the pen the, the marker so it becomes a little bit easier a little, a little more intimidating to paint it you can paint it you don't have to draw it so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please um, leave them in the comment section. If you haven't hit the bell notification button, please do so. So you know my tutorial is up because this, this crazy chick sometimes doesn't always have it on time. <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I appreciate you guys so much. I hope you enjoy your day. And I chose sunny daffodils because it's sunny out today and I felt like we needed a happy sunshine color. So take care guys and I'll speak to you soon.